seems like there's some sort of like convergence happening where you have some of these crypto startups that have been around for a while, like a circle or a Coinbase, continue, they're starting to resemble proper financial entities and get more licenses and have more capabilities and offer more products. Meanwhile, the legacy entities are starting to move towards the crypto side and it seems like there is some sort of convergence. Is there room for both of them to have a spot or is there, do you think there'll be consolidation or how, what do you see, how do you think? I, I mean, in the financial system, there's, you know, this was a big thing with Bitcoin coming in and uh, the early days, people saying yeah. this is going to replace the banks. The thing is, no bank is the same, right? right. You've got custodians, you've got fund administrators, you've got asset managers, you've got um, each have a particular domain. And I, I don't see any reason why they can't coexist. Um, and in fact, we're seeing that now. And it will be a matter of different offerings, different customer segments, different uh, different targets in each case. Within, within this whole space, there seems to, there are like phases that go. So I've, 2017 is like ICOs. And uh, then you've got like tokenization of securities. And people are really excited about the idea that maybe real world assets could somehow be represented on a blockchain. Then there's also just the sort of corporate enterprise blockchain stuff. What do you see people talking about right now in terms of the things that get them excited? Uh, I mean, depending on who you talk to, all of those things, right? They, so um, the area I'm, I'm focusing now on is on the, uh, specifically on the cryptocurrency piece. Yeah. I think last time I was here, I uh, was more broadly, uh, more broadly blockchain. Focusing on the cryptocurrency area, it is really on two sides. The startups and the, the newer companies are beginning that real uh, kind of institutionalization, right? At bringing their systems and their business into that traditional world. And on the other side, the institutions seeing this new asset class, how can they be involved? And also how can they do that in the most risk, uh, risk adjusted way? And on the pure blockchain side, I'm sad to say that my inbox has not become any less bombarded with companies and their press releases about some new blockchain thing. I'm sort of hoping for that to quiet down. From your perspective, is anything real happening right now or is it still just, you know, press releases and experiments and consortiums? No question there is a lot of hype in the space. Yeah. We are seeing some things go, um, uh, we are seeing some things go to production. We're seeing things go live. Um, but there is, um, the, the ratio of those two is, uh, you know, certainly a lot of headlines. Um, so we recommend our clients really understand the technology before uh, going too far down that path. What's funny is this guy basically is mentioning exactly what I've said. And if you subscribe to, the, to my channel, um, I've stated this numerous times that there's still a lot of hype in the crypto market that we could still possibly be in a bubble. Now, when I say bubble, um, prices could go down a little bit more. But like I said, I really do feel like around 300, 200 billion range is very, very safe for the crypto market. But um, any large shot shooting up in price to maybe 400 or 500 billion with no clear um, regulation, no clear custodianship. And like I said, so EOS and some of these new projects are finally now rolling out and being used. Um, depending on how they work and if they run into situations like CryptoKitty that CryptoKitties that Ethereum has had to deal with, um, this all will kind of help, uh, and, and this is why it's so important to educate yourself because all of these factors will help you determine whether you feel like is cryptocurrency a bubble at 300 billion? Is it a bubble at 200 billion? Is it a bubble at 500 billion? And to make these determinations, you really do need to have some sort of technical standpoint. And like I said, you don't have to be a genius. And a lot of the times, uh, there's a lot of free information to kind of educate yourself and to get opinions about about this but at the end of the day I think the best thing you can do instead of putting in large sums of money and worrying about whether it's going to go up or down is stop investing in crypto if you do not understand what EOS is or how a blockchain works um, if you don't understand the basics I do feel like there's a lot of upside into educating yourself and while you educate yourself then you can make the determination should I enter at this point or maybe I should wait because there's still 
kinks that need to be worked out. And, you know, my personal opinion is that there's still a lot of hype in this space. I do feel like we did have that great, uh, market correction from 850 billion. And in fact, I'll just bring up the chart, but, um, basically this is with the bubble, correct? And I do feel like in this, in this bracket area, there could still be some throth, but really once, if prices do go below 250 billion right here, where, my, where I'm kind of like pointing out right here, I don't think that there's much of a bubble. So if prices go below 250 billion, you should try to buy uh, and continue to, to buy as much as you can. But like I said, once it gets into the 300, 400, and 500 billion dollar range, it, it really does depend on use case and what's going on. And a lot of this, you're not gonna be able to determine um, by just uh, watching a couple YouTube videos or reading or watching Crypto Trader or whatever. Um, I think a lot of it has to be done um, through time and patience. So for the most part, take your time. Don't rush into this space if you want to invest. And uh, there's a lot of opportunity, but there's a lot of hype. So be careful and let me know what you guys think. And I will talk to you guys soon.